All right, in this video, I'm just going to do a few special examples of identifying the domain of uh, particularly uh, challenging rational functions. So we have this rational function, f of x is 1 over the square root of 7 minus x. And we want to know what is the domain of this function. Well, to identify the domain of this function, we know that the denominator cannot equal 0. So we'll say that the square root of 7 minus x cannot equal 0. And so we can solve this for not equal to 0, but here's the thing. We also need to, we need to include in this the domain of a square root function because a square, because we can't violate, we can, we can't violate the rules of the rational function, but we also can't violate the rules of the square root function. So, we can't make the denominator equal 0, okay, which is easy. You know, we can just square this side and square this side, and we get 7 minus x cannot be equal to 0. And if I add x to both sides, I get, you know, 7 cannot equal x, but that's the same as x cannot equal 0. So here's what we know. We know that x cannot equal 0, okay? Um, and what we would write, what we would write is negative infinity up to 7, union 7 up to infinity. Okay? But here's the problem, is that some of these values in this domain might violate the square root. Okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to do, a, in addition to doing the rational domain, we're also going to do the domain of this square root. And we know that as a square root... That 7 minus x has to be greater than or equal to 0. It cannot be less than 0. It can't be a negative number. And some of these numbers might make this negative. For example, uh, 10. 10 is on this domain, but if I plug 10 in for x, 7 minus 10 is negative 3. We can't take the square root of negative 3 because we can't take the square root of a negative, and we violated the, um, and we violated the uh domain. Okay, we violated a rule of math. So we're going to take this and we're going to do 7 minus x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so now we're going to subtract 7 from both sides. And we're going to get negative x is greater than or equal to negative 7. This cancels. 0 minus 7 is negative 7. Now we're going to multiply by negative 1 times negative 1. Okay, so that we can make negative x positive x. Negative 1 times negative x is positive x. But when we multiply by a negative, we have to reverse the the symbol, the inequality symbol. So now we have less than or equal to, and negative 1 times negative 7 is positive 7. And so this is saying that x has to be less than or equal to positive 7, which would be negative infinity up to 7 inclusive. And so we have to look over here and see if any part of this is not included in this. Well, you can clearly see that 7 to infinity is not in this. So we have to leave out 7 to infinity. But now we have to see if there's anything in here that's not supposed to, or that's not in here. And this one is negative infinity to 7, but it has the parenthesis. So this does not include 7. This one does include 7. So we cannot include 7. And when we, when we combine this domain with this domain, we wind up with a domain of just negative infinity up to 7, and we're done. Now, this one gets just a little bit crazier than the last example. Look what we have here. We have a function with a square root in the numerator and a quadratic in the denominator. Okay? Now, we know that for a quadratic, we can plug any number in. But if the quadratic is in the denominator, we know that the denominator cannot equal 0. But if we look at the numerator, that's a square root. And so we know that the square root has to be, well, what's under the square root has to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay? And so here's what we have to do. We have to set up two situations. The denominator, that x squared minus 25, cannot be equal to zero. And then separately, we're going to take our 8 minus x, and we're going to say that 8 minus x has to be greater than or equal to zero. So this will satisfy the domain of a rational function denominator, and this will satisfy the domain of the square root numerator. And then once we have a domain for this 
and a domain for this, we have to basically put them together, and, and it's, it's, called a, um, it's called an intersection, but we're not going to get into that right now. We need to know all of the domain that is in both this side and in this side. So we're going to do them separately. Well, x squared minus 25 is a quadratic. You could use the quadratic formula if you want. Uh, there are other methods, but we're going to use factoring. x squared minus 25 factors into x plus 5 times x minus 5. It's called a difference of squares. And this cannot be equal to 0. So now if this one equals 0, because of multiplication, 0 times anything is 0. If this equals 0, this 0 times anything equals 0. So neither one of these things can be equal to 0. So we're going to say that x plus 5 cannot be equal to 0. This can't equal 0. And this can't equal 0. So x minus 5 also cannot equal 0. Now we're just going to solve. Subtract 5, subtract 5, and we get x cannot be equal to negative 5. Same thing over here, plus 5, plus 5, x cannot be equal to positive 5. So we know that x cannot be equal to negative 5, and we know that x cannot be equal to positive 5. Let's find out what our domain restrictions are over here. We're going to go ahead and subtract 8 from both sides, and we get negative x is greater than or equal to negative 8. Then we're going to multiply the whole thing by negative 1 because we don't want negative x. So if we multiply by negative 1, negative 1 times negative x is positive x. But when we do that, and then this side is going to be positive 8, negative 1 times negative 8 is positive 8, but we have to, because we're multiplying by a negative, we have to reverse the inequality symbol. And so it's now going to become less than or equal to 8. So this would give us the domain negative infinity, because it's less than or equal to 8, negative infinity up to 8 with a bracket. And now what we have to do is we have to go over here and we have to ask ourselves, is negative 5 on this interval and is 5 on this interval? And it turns out they are. Negative 5 is between negative infinity and positive 8 because it's a negative number. 5 is smaller than 8, so 5 is also on this interval. So here's how, what we have to do is we have to rewrite this interval and remove negative 5 and 5. And here's what I want to remind you. What is the symbolism for removing, for removing a number? Well, to remove a number, what you do is you comma, put that number, put a parenthesis, put a union, open the parenthesis, put that number again, and put a comma. This is how you remove a number. That's how you remove 5. Well, how do you remove negative 5? The same thing. You, you comma, negative 5, union, parenthesis, comma, negative 5. So we need two of these. We need one for negative 5 and we need one for 5. The one for negative 5 has to come first. It has to be on the left because smaller numbers are on the left and larger numbers are on the right. You can see smaller numbers, negative infinity, and then the largest number is 8. And so, to write this, what we're going to do is we're going to start with this, parenthesis, negative infinity, because that's the smallest number. The next number we're going to come to, so negative 5, 5, and 8. The next number is negative 5. We've got to leave negative 5 out. So we're going to go comma, negative 5, parenthesis, union, parenthesis, negative 5, comma. Okay, we've taken care of negative 5. Now we're going to take care of 5, because 5 is smaller than 8. So we're going to put 5 parenthesis, union, parenthesis, 5, comma. We've just gotten rid of 5, and now we're going up to 8, and we're just going to put the 8 with the bracket, and we're done. This is the domain of that rational function. Let's do another example like this. All right, so here's another one very similar. We're going to knock this one out a little faster because we don't have to have as much commentary, okay? Uh, we can see uh, that the denominator cannot equal 0, so we know that x squared minus 81 cannot equal 0. Okay, so we're going to handle the domain over there. And then the numerator has a square root. So we know that 1 minus x has to be larger than or equal to 0. Okay, let's do this one over here first. We know x squared minus 81 factors into x minus 9 times x plus 9. So that cannot equal 0. Separately, this cannot equal 0. Separately, this cannot equal 0. So we're going to do two separate. 
So we know x minus 9 cannot equal 0, and we know that x plus 9 cannot equal 0. And if, you, know, you can do the algebra if you want to, but what we're going to come out to is x cannot be equal to 9, and x cannot be equal to negative 9. Okay? So that's our restriction. We all real numbers, but we have to leave out 9 and we have to leave out negative 9. But that's only for the denominator. Now we have to look at the domain restriction of the numerator. Here, we're going to subtract 1 from both sides, and we get negative x is greater than or equal to negative 1. We're going to multiply the whole thing by negative 1. Negative 1 times negative x is positive x. Negative 1 reverses the inequality symbol, and negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. And so our domain here is x has to be less than or equal to positive 1. Well, less than is negative infinity all the way up to 1, and we're going to put a bracket because it's or equal to. So we're going to go negative infinity up to 1. And so now we have to look at these two numbers that have to be left out. We have to leave out 9, and we have to leave out negative 9. Are those numbers, is 1, both, or none on this interval from negative infinity to 1? Well, negative 9 is on this interval. Negative 9 is between negative infinity and 1, but 9 is not. 9 is larger than 1, so x. So we're not going to have to worry about 9 at all. 9 is out over there, but it's also out over here. So all we have to do is remove negative 9. How do we remove negative 9? Well, we have to include in this interval a comma, negative 9, parenthesis, union, parenthesis, negative 9, comma. We just have to load this into this interval. And so we'll write negative infinity, then this, comma, negative 9, parenthesis, union, parenthesis, negative 9, comma. Then we'll put the 1 with the bracket, and this is the domain of f of x. Okay, here's one last example. We're going to identify the domain of this rational function. So we know that the denominator cannot equal 0, so we're going to say that x squared minus 16 cannot equal 0. But the numerator is a square root, and we know that the, what's under the square root, 13 minus 4x, has to be greater than or equal to 0. It cannot, cannot be a negative number. So over here, let's go ahead and finish this one up. If we subtract 13 from both sides, we'll get negative 4x greater than or equal to negative 13. Now, I know previously we multiplied by negative 1. The only reason I did that was because the x was just negative x. But I can now divide by negative 4 because I have a negative 4 in front of it. So I'm going to divide by negative 4 on both sides. On the left side, it's going to cancel the negative 4. Because I'm dividing by a negative number, I have to reverse the inequality symbol. So it'll become less than or equal to. So now we have the x is less than or equal to. And then negative 13 divided by negative 4, we have a negative divided by a negative. That's a positive, And therefore, it's going to be 13 over 4. By the way, 13 over 4 is approximately a little bit larger than the number 3. Okay? So this is about, about positive 3. But we're not going to write it as a 3. We're going to write our domain as negative infinity because we have less than or equal to negative infinity up to 13 over 4 with a bracket because we have the or equal to. Over here, we have a quadratic. This is factorable. It needs to not be equal to 0. So I'm going to factor this into x uh, plus 4 times x minus 4 not equal to 0. If either one of these equals 0, then the whole thing will equal 0. So neither one of these can equal 0. So we're going to separate them. x plus 4 cannot equal 0. x minus 4 cannot equal 0. And now the solution here is negative 4. And there's, you know, we know that when we have one of these binomials, we just reverse the sign. Because negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Okay? So we're going to say that x cannot equal negative 4. And over here, x cannot equal positive 4. So now we know that we cannot include negative 4 in the, in the domain, and we cannot include positive 4 in the domain. So we have to ask ourselves, are either of these numbers on this domain? Well, this number is about 3, but it's not quite 4. So 4 is larger than 13 over 4. It's over here. So we're, it's already out. So we don't have to worry about 4. But negative 4 is on this domain. Negative 4 is larger than negative infinity, but it's smaller than this positive number, because all negative numbers are smaller than all positive numbers. And so we have to worry about this negative 4. So how do we take this negative 4 out of this 
interval? Well, like I said, you just write comma, negative four, parenthesis, union, parenthesis, negative four, comma, and then just load this into this. And so now we're going to have negative infinity, comma, negative four, parenthesis, union, parenthesis, negative four, comma, and then we'll put this part on 13 over four, bracket, and that's our domain. And that's it for uh, funky rational functions.